This tutorial will continue with the previous tutorial where we added structural plans. Now we're going to add beams and beam systems. And similar to what we had to do earlier, we have to figure out what the size and span is for our beams and our beam systems, just like we had to do with the size and type of our column. Since we went ahead and used open web, excuse me, W sections for our columns, we're going to stick with steel for our beams and our beam systems. You notice if we go to the structure tab, we have beam systems as an option and we have beams as an option. Remember that we have beams and girders that span from column to wall or column to column, and those actually support the beam systems. So we need to place our beams first. If I select beam, then I will see if Revit has a default beam, which it does, but if not, or if this is not the type of beam that I need based on the structural system selected for the project, I need to go to Load Family, go back up to the library, and then I want to look at structural framing now. You notice there are lots of other structural options here, but framing is what we're going to call some of the things that we need now for the beams and the beam systems. So I'm going to go into the steel section and I have lots of different options depending on what I want to use. They even have joists, things like that. And this allows me to select what I need. I need to know the size because if I try to put in one of these open web joists, it's going to ask me what size I need. So I have to be prepared with the size of all the structural elements before I start inserting them in Revit. Since I already have a beam defaulted in Revit, I'm going to keep that here. And then here you notice we still have the option of putting them on grid lines. So I can put them on grid lines or I can draw them from one point to the next. Thinking about the fact that the beam has to sit on a load bearing wall and it has to attach to a column. And depending on the side of the column, it may attach on the side of the column or the inside of the column. But let's use the add grids or on grids and select all of our grid lines using our fence from right to left and hit finish. Now if I go look at this in 3D, you can see that it only put them where I had columns, not where I had walls. So I'm going to have to go back and I'm going to have to change that. It also put it at a certain level. And so we can't see them here, but I can hit escape to get out of the command and then I can again use the fence tool and select everything and then use the filter tool and all I can see is my columns. So I need to try to find where those beams got placed and here we can see they got placed as a reference level one and you hear, you also see in the properties that it has a start level and an end level offset and that allows for you to slope beams for a sloped ceiling a slope floor like we might see in an auditorium for ramps and things like that and you can also do that with slabs. So since I did not pick the reference level when I placed them now it's going to be harder for me to move them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo the placement of those beams and I'm going to go to level 2 and I'm going to try placing them instead knowing that the beams will actually be related to level 2 because they're supporting the floor of level 2. You notice when I select beam it doesn't give me any reference level but I can select it before I place it. And then it has again that start extension and end extension so that means it's going to be zero when I place it and ideally it will be aligned with level two. So instead of using the on grids I can place them from wall to wall but I'm going to go ahead and use the on grids to at least place the ones at the columns and then I can go back and add the other ones later. So now I have got those beams that go from column to column and you notice that they don't go all the way into the center of that column and that is because this is a building information model but it doesn't have all of the detail. Even if I change my course scale fill level it doesn't make a difference. We can add connection details later as we start getting into the wall section and the floor plan detail. I can also go back to my plan, go to the view tab and add some section markers to start looking at this construction in section. And 
And what that helps me do is I can use tile views or I can go back and look at it as I'm drawing it and see what the impact is of adding these different structural elements. And remember, I can change my coarse scale fill pattern to fine and I can actually see those structural elements as opposed to coarse when it's just a diagram, it's just a line. But what that does is that gets rid of the poche and so sometimes we have to go back and poche as a hatch later because of that coarse scale fill pattern issue. I also notice that these foundation footings are actually too tall. So let me try making that zero instead. And you notice because the footing was attached to that, it adjusted it. So I didn't need that negative three feet because I associated that with the actual level of foundation. So if I select these, I should be able to fix all of those and have them come up to the proper level. This is why looking at things in section can be so beneficial because you can see things that you might miss in other views, but then it updates the entire building information model so that everything is correct. As I make these kinds of changes, I definitely want to remember to save. And then I can go back to my 3D and see that I still need to add those beams. So I can go to my level two. I can zoom in, see I can see the beams because this is now a structural plan. It is not a floor plan. I can also change my core scale fill level and I can see those beams more efficiently than the diagram. So I can go to structure, beam, and now I can draw the beam and I have those added. And you notice that even though I'm selecting the center of the column, it's still cutting that beam off at the column. And that's okay. So that's Revit being smart and figuring those things out. However, it doesn't cut the column or the beam off at the wall. So we can adjust that if needed. The next tutorial I'm going to do will show you how to add beam systems now that we have beams added.